whenever you guys are ready, you can go ahead. All right, sounds good. So for our final project, we were inspired by Lab 2, which involved implementing the Boyd's algorithm, which is an algorithm that simulates the flocking behavior of living creatures like birds or fish or something like that. And at the end of the lab, we extended the algorithm by adding, adding a predator that uh, the Boyd's avoided. And we thought that that left room for some really interesting and fun extensions, namely to turn it into a game in which a couple of players can actually control the predators manually and chase around the boys and try to eat them like a real predator would do to a flock of birds. We wanted to extend the difficulty and make it a little bit more fun by doing the control using computer vision and making your controller a laser pointer that you point at a screen. And so now we have implemented the boys algorithm and they're flying around the screen and two players take a laser pointer aim it at the screen, which is being watched by a webcam connected to a Raspberry Pi, which runs computer vision, tracks the laser pointers, sends that data back to the PIC, which then calculates a predator position based on an algorithm we've implemented for positioning the predators, and then allows those predators to chase around and eat the boys. Every time you get a boy, you get a point, and once the boys are all eaten, you see who wins. So uh, the hardware used in, uh, includes the PIC, um, some of the hardware from previous labs, so we're driving um, audio, you hear a little bit of a sound when you eat a void. Um, and then it's also connected over a serial interface to the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is receiving data from the webcam. And the display is happening using a document camera trained on the TFT. And uh, we, we did that because that makes for a very um, speedy communication, it reduces the burden on the PIC, which is already pretty heavily burdened with all that we're asking it to do, and uh, still rendering at 30 frames per second. So uh, with that, Claire can talk a little bit more about the implementation on the PIC. Yeah, so the first thing we realized that we needed to do was extend uh, support for more than one predator, and so we did that by mirroring the sort of voids array structure that we had and doing a similar predator array that would also track predator positions. And then we also knew that we needed to track if voids had been eaten so that we could draw them as black circles instead of white ones. So we added another field to the void struct called eaten, and that's basically just a flag where zero means it hasn't been eaten yet, and one means it has been eaten. And then in our voids algorithm, we added another loop that instead of checking void neighbors, it checks for, uh, we determined a parameter called depth range, which is slightly smaller than the predator range that they can view predators in. Um, and so basically we calculate the position of a void relative to both predators, and if it's within that sort of depth range, then the point is assigned to whatever predator was closest. Now, we also uh, extended the movement of the predator beyond just simply tracking the laser pointer directly, and we did this to make the game a little bit more challenging and a little, little bit more fair. Because if it followed the laser pointer directly, then you could just snap it around the screen almost instantaneously, and it would be far too easy to catch the voids, which can't happen in real life with a real predator. So now the way we have uh, implemented it is the voids basically chase your laser pointer, and their speed is a function of their distance from the current position of the laser pointer, subject to a maximum speed. And so rather than just pointing exactly where you want the, void, or the predator to go, you have to anticipate a little bit uh, where you want the predator to be after a little bit of time delay. And so uh, you have to do some thinking about where the boys are going to be and about where you want your predator to be so you can steer it in the right direction. Yeah, and then the last few features that we added were more related to the gameplay experience. And so in that uh, Python string thread where we're receiving uh, the predator location over serial from the Pi, we are drawing the predators as a square and a circle so that uh, the players can differentiate. And then we also have scoring up in the top corner to display how each player is doing, a border so that we can align it with our uh, OpenCV bounding box, and then finally at the end of the game we display uh, the winner as well as the final score. And then additionally we, as Alec mentioned, uh, implemented direct digital synthesis, so we pulled basically our ISR from uh, the lab one code and then basically each time a board is eaten we play a different tone, uh, slightly higher for the red player and slightly lower for the green. We implemented the uh, closed loop control using OpenCV uh, and image processing tools uh, to create a computer vision algorithm that received uh, serial data uh, or sent serial, serial data uh, from the Pi to the PIC to just dictate uh, predator position. So if you come over to here, yeah. we can show you the uh, machine vision algorithm running on a Pi with a 
visual representation. So uh, there are several challenges associated with uh, determining laser pointer position in a, in a classroom setting with a projector and lights. Uh, we were able to uh, isolate them by creating a color, uh, several color masks to reduce the color space and reduce the region of interest to just what we wanted. At the same time, we also applied several blurring, filtering, uh, uh, mid-processing tools like that uh, to further isolate and amplify the regions of interest while removing background noise, uh, salt and pepper noise, uh, things like that. And ultimately, we were able to refine the OpenCV algorithm to a point where it was uh, as fast or even faster than the, uh, the PIC uh, was processing. So uh, no lag uh, appears on the uh, OpenCV side of things. Awesome. All right, let's do a demo of the game now. So let me get out of your way. The square is the red laser pointer, okay. Oh, it's high. It's high. It's happened before. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. It's harder when there are only a few points. Yeah. Awesome. So not only are they sparser, but we've actually programmed it to be harder to catch them. Yeah. Very cool. So so just to summarize the infrastructure involved here, because there's there's a bit of it. Mm -hmm. You have the PIC32 over here that's running the Boyd's algorithm. Right. And communicating with the TFT screen. That TFT screen is being observed by the overhead document camera. Yep. Which communicates to the projector up there. Correct. And you and, are, yeah, go ahead. And we've got serial connection to the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So that's sending the, it, it's one way serial communication. So the Raspberry Pi is sending uh, data that contains a predator ID. So predator zero and predator one, and then it's corresponding X and Y coordinates, which the pick receives. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we've got DAC A and B driving uh, audio. Awesome, awesome. So whenever a predator of a certain color eats a boy, there's one sound effect. The other Correct. predator, there's a different sound effect. Very, very cool. Thank, Thank you. you. That's awesome.